Hey, Corey. Oh, it's an Ankylo. That looks like a... An, an, an Ankylo. Ankylo. That has to be a D&D monster. Sure. Wait. Uh, we should have mentioned this like 800 episodes ago. <laughs> but the guy who posted... Excuse me. I don't know who, what you're... Uh, the individual. The individual who posted the link to the Final Fantasy vs. D&D monster comparison. Guy, did you see this? No. Really? Oh, they posted a link that was like... It listed all the Final Fantasy monsters in order with their D&D &D equivalents. <laughs> I'm an asshole, I guess. I don't remember. No, it's okay. It was like, I think it was just one post, but it was really... I mean, it basically says that all of the monsters were lifted from D&D. Jesus. Like, it, I mean, I think it's easy to overlook a lot of the ones that seem like common fantasy monsters now, mm -hmm. like ogres and stuff. Though, I would probably make the argument that maybe they weren't as common then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it is very interesting. It includes their, like, you know, their actual Final Fantasy name versus their D and D name. And I think the idea was that at the time, it was it was what's the current company? It's not. I know it's Hasbro, but is it is it Wizards? Wizards. Wizards now? Yeah, Wizards. It used to be TSR. Yeah. And they were a lot less, I think, defensive of their intellectual property. Hmm. That's kind of the idea, I think. So they didn't seem to mind as much. Hmm. But now, um, and some people on the thread are talking about this, the open game license, which lets, like, essentially most of the mechanical framework of, like, 3rd and 3.5 edition D&D exist in open source format. Mm -hmm. But certain parts of the game are trademarked by Wizards of the Coast and cannot be reproduced. And a lot of it includes specific monster types hmm. that are unique. And I believe that includes things like the Mind Flayer. Wow. Like things that are recognizably trademarked as D&D &D brand monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That's crazy. It is pretty crazy. Don't you purr at me. All right, Corey. Into. We're going in the waterfall. Oh, wait. We're back, everyone. We've been back. Oh. Well, then, when I Corey, said that, you ordered that. that. A... Nightmares. What Ryan didn't tell you is we had a fun rock and roll session. We did. We rocked out. Mm-hmm. We did. Oh, I forgot I had this beer. Yeah, we're drinking Lovecraft. We're drinking some more Lovecraft. We did a brief party rocking moment because we listened to the mashed potato and we were comparing their dance moves by uh, BD Sharp. The party rock, the shuffle looks exhausting. It's very tiring. Because I think I was kind of shuffling. Yeah, Corey tried and it just looks, it just looks like so much work. A, dancing is good exercise. Yeah. I, I actually have um, Dance Central for the Xbox. Nice. Tree 60. Do you know how much I want you to talk to each one of these goddamn ads? Like... <laughs> I, I and this fun. is why I'm playing. I know, it's true, it's true. Also, the backgrounds <laughs> continue to be unique, which is great. It's yeah. so sweet. Of God, there's so much variety in this game. It's really it awesome. It really is. You kind of even don't realize how much it's going to give you until you get later in the game. Like, yeah. It's kind of like... It just keeps giving. Honka -wonka -wonka Final -wonka 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 Fantasy, the game that keeps giving. That's true. <laughs> but so This place is just a maze. Dance Central. Yeah, yeah this Dance one... Central's fun. It well, is it is tiring, but it's fun. This dungeon music seems a little bit more chipper than usual. Uh, it's kind of not dungeon music. It's kind of the music for when you're like yeah. in a underground home, like uh, Matoya's cave like, and stuff. Or that other guy, Sageman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever that guy's name was, I forget his name. Not Luke. Uh, don't remember. Yeah. I don't have it. Nightmare, Mare. Nightmare. Arthur. I do like how the nightmare is like a sort of mm -hmm. flying horse, just like in magic. Mm -hmm. I'm into that. I do like that too. Feels right in my mind. Oh wait, we talked about the mummies. <laughs> We've talked. I about made the Ryan mummies. listen to Justine by yeah. Don and Dewey. I heard some Justine, 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 Justine. You just want to remember. They're just yelling Justine at each other over and over. Oh man, it's so like. It's so wild for the, like, late 50s. It really is, though. Those guys really like Justine, whoever she was. What if you were Justine? Well, they're like, all right, 
I'm gonna go to the barber shop. Get, I'm gonna have him do me up. I'm gonna be clean for my little buttercup. It's weird when you just speak the lyrics. Yeah, it doesn't sound as nice. I'm gonna get clean for my little buttercup. Ooh. It sounds much creepier. Justine. 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 Sounds like Justine. some Lovecraft happening Justine. right now. You just won't treat me right. <laughs> much creepier. A lot of rock and roll lyrics are sexist and awful. It's sad. <laughs> there are some there are some fifty songs though that are absolutely terrible, like take the cake levels of terrible. <gasps> what is that? What are you? A Robo Man? Talk to him. Take this cube with it, you can transfer to the floating castle. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I was not expecting us to go into waterfall and meet a robot and then it would give us a cube. Ooh. Um, that's really fucking cool. Wait, who are we supposed to give this cube to exactly? I don't know. I just know that we needed to come get it. Oh, uh, well, maybe we have to go to the top of the tower. Oh, wait. Hang on. Okay, here's my hypothesis. What's and everyone hypothesis? who's actually known anything about this game can just be... Ha ha ha. Being at me. Um, we bring the slab. We bring in Dr. Onion. He reads it. He translates Lafinish. We go to LaFineland, and then all the people, we get their knowledge because we can hear their tongue. They tell us the secret tone to go into the desert tower. We ascend to the desert tower, place the cube, and enter the floating castle, where waits the fiend of wind. That's my guess. We gotta assemble all these MacGuffins into, into the final dungeon. I really think that's what's gonna happen. I think you might be right. I think I'm right. I just know that this is the next thing. According to this guide, that I'm just kind of reading the place names so I know what order to do yeah. things in. <laughs> and hoping for the best. The guide didn't just say Justine, 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 Justine. <laughs> now it does. Well, that's my guide. Can't oh, hold anymore. Good God, it's Molly. It's right, the what are we getting rid of? Sometime that... label mate, uh, uh, Little Richard. I guess we're getting rid of this Opal Gauntlet. Bye. Y'all know. You know, you know what I mean. Oh, we were talking about this. Another ribbon. Hot dog, double ribbon. Everyone has so much armor. I see now, why we need a black belt. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Um, the real question here was if the... Wow, we just... We no longer have the ability to pick up armor. <laughs> no, we really don't. What, well, the question... Oh, yeah, we're just full, aren't we? Well, hang on. That seems like a terrible plan. Okay. All right. Worst comes to worst, Brad can drop a cap... Because it does almost nothing. Okay. But, like... You really should have blank armor slots. It's kind of silly. Ooh, wizard staff. Corey, what can you tell me about the wizard staff? Well, the wizard staff, you may... Well, you're doing no. that. You're the rest of these chests. Okay. Which are full of money. I... <laughs> In the treasure box, you found defense. Hmm. <laughs> You know, defense. Do you, but wait, what even is it? It's a weapon. What in the world? Okay, I need you to also tell me about this weapon called defense. Okay, if you can. Yes, give me one moment. No pressure. Oh, I should have had someone try to use the wizard staff. Just see what it does. Okay, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, well, wizard. Safe. Wizard safe. <laughs> Finn. Fantasy. Wait. Okay, I didn't, I didn't type that at all. Wizard Rod. Mm. Good, this fight again. Super mummies. Justine. 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 It's one only done is saying it. Just dang. Just dang. Oh, cat's confused, apparently. Oh, fuck that. That seems dumb and stupid. Okay, what was the other thing? Defense. Defense. Final Fantasy. Defense. I don't know any sport chant. One, two, let's go sports. Defense. <laughs> One, two, let's go sports. Okay, there's a funny story I have to tell you. Yeah. They're doing March Madness at work. Of course they are. Because... I don't understand North Carolina and its obsession with college basketball, but whatever. Um, anyway, we uh, 
we chose we, we okay. The entire office was put into March Madness brackets. Yep. You had to opt out specifically in order to not just be put in them by default. Look at this bat that's just way off. What's the surface bat? Door. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. That's a little bit different than the way it used to be when I was there. It's 100% weird and different. Anyway, um, Christine somehow managed to guess the uh, for the first round, like, the first day, guessed all of the brackets correctly, and was like, apparently it was super unlikely, so she got a $20 gift card and was like, it, now on our team is like in the top like 10 percentile right That's now. That's actually really cool. It is really cool. But the best part is like, you know, like Jim and stuff is sending out uh, all reply alls and stuff, but Chrissy just sends out a big glittery gif of sports, <laughs> or, it's, or it's a slam dunk, and then she just said sports with an explanation. <laughs> or expl- expl- oh, That's really talk. hilarious. It was really funny. I was too excited to explain it properly. <laughs> <laughs> it just said sports in with an explanation. That's awesome. Which was great. Good, 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 good. I'm sorry. I messed it up. Messed up. Fucked it up. Unfortunately, the round... The rounds, huh. yeah. The round of sixty-four is worth the least amount of points in terms of the final score. Yeah. Like every game you guess correctly in the round of sixty-four is worth one point, and Oof. they double for every round above that. So that's so crazy. Guessing the f- the the final four or whatever is worth like so much more points than getting any number of the round of sixty-four right. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's good for her now, and hopefully she continues I, to be right so that she can just win a bunch of money. I think everybody just picked them at random on our team, though, because, like, it's hard if you don't follow college basketball. But it's not hard if you just know basic math. Like, you can so? you can, you can can side on, on, on seeds. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Corey. It's tournament stuff. So, the number one seed is the team that is, like, the best. And they're paired against the... How, six- do, you, how do you know, though? Because it says next to the team name in, like, basically oh, every really? listing of the, ste- of the teams, what seed they are. Oh. And, and so a team that does really, really well in the season gets a high seed number. Or, uh-huh. uh, excuse me, a low seed number. So, like, the number one seed is the team that did the best during the season. Okay. And in the first round, they get paired against the team with the lowest seed number. Or the high. Fuck me. The highest seed number. So it's first seed versus... Oh, like so, there's, so there's one that's really weighted to win and one that's not at yeah. each level. And so the game, the games that are interesting are the ones where it's like middle numbers, like you know, fifteen versus sixteen. Interesting. I just assumed I had, I had I didn't know that. I've never done like a tournament thing like this. Before. I'm probably just like saying a whole bunch of wrong shit that people are gonna laugh at. Probably about. right. I mean, you know more about that. I literally just picked it by the states that seemed less likely to win. I I because we were incentivized slash bullied into caring about all things office and trying to be the ones that won at all things office oh, on the right. sales team. Like, I had to kind of look into it and research it and try to make sure I was making intelligent choices um, in my bracket. Um, so. Defense, by the way, is a defense sword. It, in- it increases your evasion stat. It allows you to class- cast Roos uh, or Blink. Whatever the actual stat is in this one. What is roots? And it, it raises your evasion by like 80. It doesn't sound very good. It doesn't sound super good. <laughs> Charlie. Um, you can't make love to the controller. Uh, mm, the tournament thing is kind of unique, right, though? Because, like, I'm thinking in other sports don't usually do tournament status. They have some sort of pre-organized schedule. Like it's in, different depending on the sport. Like college football has the like bowl system. Yeah, I don't. I think it's maybe it's a college sports thing because I don't really get it. Like and it, like yeah, NFL and MLB both have like you know they're organized by conference or league, and then they have you 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 play against a certain other a percentage number of teams per your division, and then per league, and then per interleague and stuff like that. Damn it, turn me. You need to settle down. But your overall success is determined primarily by your win-loss ratio, not by anything else. Right. And I think in football it might also be determined by how many times you, you've won and lost against other people in your division. That sounds right. I don't know. I follow... Like the, the NFC and... All yeah. That. Baseball's the only one I really... Because in baseball, it determines your... who Like, whoever is winning in the division is the one that goes on. I feel like we've never mentioned how 
and you were into baseball. Oh yeah, I'm into baseball. Like it was a recent thing for me in the past couple of years, but mm-hmm. I was getting pretty into it. Corey is the sportsmanliest of the two of us. Yeah, somehow that's true. I know nothing about most sports, but I like I like football a little bit. It's because I'm from Chicago, I think. I have a soft spot for the Bears. Bears. If you're from Chicago, you have to like the sport, the teams that lose all the time. <sighs> we had our brief run with Michael Jordan. Yeah. I do remember um, once when they won something as a child, going outside like in, with every kid yeah. on the street mm-hmm. pounding pots and pans. You remember yeah. this? Yeah, Holy I, shit. we did the same thing. Yep. Yeah. The Bulls were a big fucking deal, and Michael Jordan was every kid's hero. I don't know. Was that like a national thing, or is this a Chicago thing? This is a Chicago thing. Because I mean, I don't think anyone got as crazy out of control in the, the suburbs like we did. Because people, like, we were crazy for the Bulls. Like, yeah, well, because they were awesome. They, it's because they were. Awesome. They were the best team in NBA history, like, just ever. It makes I mean, for... you, you you had Michael Jordan, you had Scottie Pippen, you had Dennis Rodman, you had we had a yeah you're right this fucking it's insane. just like it's just like everyone I don't know the team was insane like I'm not saying I wouldn't like college basketball I just don't really get it it's just a, a lot more transient like yeah I don't know well I'm not I know their careers are a lot shorter. Well, in North, yeah, I think that's part of it. In North Carolina, I know is a lot of people here are intimately connected to some of the schools. Like, so they have like regional um, or literal like university level attachments to these teams. Mm-hmm. But I, they mean nothing to me, not being from here. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's me. I don't know. I are you, are you when I was when I was tutoring, I tutored freshman athletes at NC State for a summer. Okay, and was I was part of. You know them passing their summer classes. So do you have a sense of attachment to NC State a little bit? Like at least for a couple of the players, I like. This is gonna be super regional and incomprehensible. People don't know, but NC State basketball. We have a player by the name CJ Leslie, and I was uh, his tutor during oh, his freshman summer session, prior to his freshman year, and I helped him pass his um, wow. sociology and English. I think it's hard to remember. But, um, that's pretty nuts. And though. like he he became kind of a star on the team, and that was kind of nice. I don't know. It's that's awesome though. I kinda, see, I, I kind of care about it a little bit. But see, that's way more of a connection than I have. Like yeah. not being from here or having any sense of them, I don't even really know that. Like I barely know the difference between the names and the universities. I mean, NC State is red and white. That UNC one I know because that's right baby near blue. us. Which one of them? UNC is baby blue. Oh, which Duke one is royal? Is blue. that the one with the ram? Oh uh, yeah, and then Duke the Tar is, Heels. Yeah, I don't. And see, Duke none of is that the Blue Devils. To me at all. But we could, see the thing is like, I I went to Northern Illinois University, which has no real connection to any sports things because all of our teams kind of <laughs> were terrible. So like, I like college sports just weren't a thing in Illinois. How do you get the fuck out of here? This place is a yeah, fucking we've been nightmare. nightmare. <laughs> It, like, we got a, what we needed, and now I cannot leave. It, it's a fucking what, Ryan? Uh, it's uh, a couple nightmares. <laughs> it's a couple nightmares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. We were, we were really a, a sports town. Yeah. Uh, that, that's one of the, honestly, one of the biggest weird differences living in North Carolina versus living in Illinois. College sports are totally a thing here, and they're totally not a thing in Illinois. I mean, part of all. it's because our professional sports teams are terrible. Well, and you you don't have sports teams in some sports. Like, you don't yeah. have a baseball team. And we don't really have a basketball team. Right. We have football. Was it? What, was but it? we share it with South Carolina. What's the, what, oh, the Panthers? Yeah, the Panthers. They're just Carolina Panthers. Right? And they, they're they okay, but like, I don't know. Hmm. It's not the Cowboys. It's not, the, it's not even the Bears. It's not even the, well... I'm pretty sure they're better than the Bears. I love the Bears. I, that's my one Chicago loyalty. Alright. Fair enough. It's hard not to love them. My dad likes the Bears too, so it's kind of... A little bonding point. That's nice. I love the Bears. I don't feel that attachment to Chicago baseball, though. This is kind of awful, isn't it? White Sox are... Well, the White Sox are kind of assholes. And the Cubs, every they're the kind of love to... You know... Uh, like eternal underdogs, <laughs> but uh, like like uh, Michael Abbott, the Brittany Gamer, is a huge Cubs fan, I believe. But he's also super into baseball, right? He is. He's su- Yeah, he's crazy it's into baseball. Whole GM. Yeah, he has numerous posts talking about baseball mechanics versus gaming. And like and and like 
baseball simulators and stuff. Yeah. Which just sound he, like a fucking nightmare to me. They just sound like, so like, terrible. I, I think a lot of, like, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's too far off. The people who are interested in, like, baseball mechanic simulators are also interested in crunchy D&D style games. Yeah, like, it's, like just, it's funny. You think of those things being separate sometimes, but they're not really that far apart. It just feels to me like rules nightmare. Like, it's just all of this incomprehensible shit that you have to wade through just to it, try to enjoy yourself. I think it's just a huge barrier. Um, but once you're into it, like, like he's t- he's had posts about scoring baseball games before. Have you heard this? Yes. It, well, I read um, those posts, and, and I always thought that was really appealing. Ooh, we have a Red Karib. And, Ooh, and, and a Frost Skater. Frost Skater. We've never even seen these guys. But... Yeah, I like. I honestly find the idea of scoring a baseball game manually alongside it really cool because it's such an interactive thing that you can do with the game. I tried to do it with a program at a Durham Bulls game one time. Oh, did and it you? was just like fucking. I it's had hard. No idea what was happening. It's hard. I, I got lost within the first two innings. I think. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the, I just want to drink a beer. <laughs> I mean, that's cool too. But I, one of the one of the biggest things that I wanted to track the one I would score it is actually the actual pitches. Like where they go in the batter's box. Like how would you? Like you can kind of tell with a what are the pitch effects. Like you can tell. I one of the biggest things that bothered me when I watched baseball is I couldn't tell the difference between the pitches, and it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe that seems esoteric to other people, but like you know, like the commentators will be like, oh, I threw this, threw this ball. You know what I mean? It's kind of mm-hmm. like you can tell based on the speed and the where it's falling in the box and stuff. Or like you know, this pitcher has X number of pitches and stuff. Like, you can throw nine different types of pitches versus two. Or it'll be like a fastball pitcher or something like that. It's just so much. It fascinates me. It's too too much for me. I think I like it because it's RPG-like to me. Honest, yeah, I can to, see that sort of. To be perfectly of. honest. It's like, so picture it this way. But you have just you have no influence whatsoever. This is, this is my problem. That, sports, that's the, but. and I remember people in the comments talking about that too. Yeah, and that's fair, I think. I think like, we, that's why I guess I get baseball sims where like you're the manager or whatever, like you exert some I, kind of control. But just like being a fan of sports just seems so impossible for me. I don't know. I, I think I, this is how I would phrase it because I I know that there are people in the brain and gamer who responded exactly that way and saying that it's like well there's no interactive component. Well he argued that the scoring was like was a deep participatory, you know, attentive experience and that you're paying attention to the game on a level that most people aren't. And I understand that you're still, you're not influencing the action anyway, so that's the primary point of contention. I think the thing, the distinction that I would make is that in the in the actual live game, it's really pretty much possible for anything to happen. There's a broader range of possibilities than there is in something that's pre-programmed, even like Final Fantasy. Like, we have control over what we're doing, but like, mechanics control like it's hard coded into the system at any given time you know what i mean it's not Mm -hmm. possible for tony to break his arm or something you know what i mean or get hit by a pitch and and be pulled out of the game or you know all all sorts of other random things that could happen you you know what i mean yeah i I mean but you trade that random variability for control over the action because otherwise you're just an observer to some degree i get it but it's just like like Saying that that the method by which you participate is that attentiveness is mm-hmm. like, yeah, but you could do that with like almost anything, and there's nothing about baseball that is more that way than almost anything else. Like, I don't know, there there's a lot of other stuff that you could be equally super attentive about if you're well informed enough about that thing to have a super participatory experience and. I, I, I think I think probably the point that he was making is that the mechanics of the game and the nuances are such that they 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 uniquely reward close attention as a system. A slab. This slab will lead us to solve the riddle of the life. Now listen to me. <laughs> oh. um, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. Wait, wait. Great. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, like I, I, I'm, and I'm also just partially arguing for Michael Abbott. In his in in his stead, but yeah, I, and I'm sure that he elaborates in a more eloquent way than I am doing. But well, I mean, just in a more complete way. Yeah, like you're distilling the argument for him. 
Honestly, I think probably the appeal of baseball is is less intellectual than that and more emotional. Like, like I'm sure that there's an appeal to this that's mechanical, but there's also just something about it that appeals to you as a viewer mm-hmm. in a way that, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I can see that for sure. But like, in the same way that, like, it just doesn't have that for me at all. And I think that's completely fair. It's probably not just in everyone thing. I want to hope that there's, like, a spot I can land right here, but I just know it's not. Yeah, there's totally I to, not. I have to walk all this way through all these This dinosaurs. is kind of fucked up. Like, why give us the airship at all? <laughs> if you're going to make us walk. Like, it's that. I, I do find that kind of unintuitive. Oh, Tyro. So it goes. I, I think part of the... I think part of the fun, actually... Like, actually, can we think of... I'm going to present an idea to you, okay? Okay. Um... I'm trying to think of an analog. I think part of the appeal is not so much in having impact on the game that such that you're impacting the actual outcome, so as it so much as it is watching it, observing and predicting the outcome, um, potential outcome. Does that make sense? And it all distills down to the pitcher batter duel. So you so you're at at every stage with with your kind of expert knowledge set. Mm-hmm. anticipating what pitch will be thrown, whether they'll swing, why or not, where they'll aim, where the pitch will go, what kind of pitch they'll throw. And it will all be dependent on the two different players and, and the situation. Maybe the once. closest analog is is observing professional poker. I, that's honestly what I was... He was trying to think of something gambling related. Mm-hmm. Because because people do watch and that. And I, I find professional poker way more interesting. <laughs> but, but, but you get it that it's, a, it that it's part of... There is some joy on the part of the spectator yeah. in terms of trying to predict what will happen, right? Yeah, I can see that I, I and maybe it's just because i know poker a lot better than i know baseball yeah. which is why i would find it you know much more likely that i would ever you know watch and try to predict poker than anything like, else but like like i think can i give you like a brief example you can okay so say like and this is going to be probably pretty loose but i remember watching a lot of yankees games last year let's say it's a situation where the batter has two strikes on him mm-hmm. and three balls. Mm-hmm. So one more ball and he'll walk. And you've already got someone on first and second. You don't want to load the bases, for instance. Okay? Okay. Um, this batter... Like, it, it, you have to know the players to a certain degree, too. So it's like, you know this batter frequently swings outside the zone or something like that. Mm-hmm. Which is the strike zone. Right. Um, or you know that they don't. One of the two. Maybe this pitcher is not is a fastball pitcher. It doesn't have a lot of um, doesn't have a change. Doesn't have something else that tricks the batter. So maybe they throw something wide in the hopes that the batter will swing outside the zone and and get a third strike. Mm-hmm. But if they don't swing, then it becomes a ball and they load the bases. So it's like weighing the threat of what they will do. And then you know what I mean. Like you know that before the pitch is thrown, that that's a possibility. I think actually now the mm. closest analog is magic, except I get to do that while also playing the game. Yeah, that, I mean that's the biggest. Thing. Like high level magic is that is, well, is you know thinking several turns ahead, thinking about what each exactly action means, but then also having the power to respond and control. Which well, magic's interactive in that way. I guess the difference would be between watching like actual pro magic players play and like, the, and that's playing, really like legacy too. decks or something yeah. crazy like that that you can't afford well not even legacy like watching pro players play a format that you actually play all the time and play it in a totally different way is, well, is what's truly bad i mean in a certain in a certain point in time you know what i mean kids play baseball you know what i'm saying